I have the pleasure of introducing friend and colleague, whom many of you have probably met, um, Rod Richardson, who is doing incredible work with um, his foundation and all around clean tax cuts and, and trying to bridge the divide um, that is so prevalent in our country right now. So Rod is going to take it away, and uh, we look forward to hearing. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Katie, and thank you very much, Chip and Sally, and, and really all the uh, R-Day volunteers. They're doing a fantastic job. Let's give them all a hand. Uh, wonderful job, guys. And, and thank you all uh, for coming to this uh, amazing event. So many uh, smart people here. Um, what you're going to hear today uh, is the first presentation of the new uh, Barrier-Free Clean Capital Market Act, uh, which is the distillation of a lot of work on uh, the clean tax cuts. Now, I'm going to apologize. This is the first public presentation, so my uh, slides look terrible in my, uh, you, know, pre, you know, you're getting the, the first presentation, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's going to be, I'm going to click through a lot of stuff. but. Uh, when we're going to have a, uh, at, at the 15 minute mark, uh, you guys can go to lunch if you want to, or you can stay for Q&A and we can go over some of the stuff that I'm going to skip through uh, pretty quickly. But, the, you know, the first uh, point that I want to ask is, you know, why is it that we ne actually need a barrier-free clean capital market that's global? Well, it's because we need about $160 trillion of new clean investment over the next 40 years to avoid two degrees warming. Uh, the, and that's the, uh, on about $4 trillion a year, we're doing about $400 billion, maybe $600 billion by some estimates, so we're at 10 to 15 percent of what we need. We need to do a lot more. A, a key policy goal needs to be to grow clean investment. So we need new policy, but, but why do we need new policy? Um, you know, basically, it, be, we need new policy because the policy that is currently there was never designed to support profitable, clean investment. It's, it, most of that stuff that we have, the revenue neutral carbon tax, wind investments, tax credits, first production, uh, the, the uh, uh, tax credits, were meant to support uh, unprofitable clean investments. Your only policy options were to subsidize or to uh, knock down fossil fuels. There was no uh, ability to, uh, sub, you know, to support profitable investments, but that exists now. That possibility has ex existed since 2015 for both wind and solar. So we need a new generation of, of uh, solutions that can, uh, you know, accelerate capital. So how do you do that? Well, Two years ago, uh, Chip kindly invited me here to our day to do the first public presentation of the raw concept of clean tax cuts. So this is the two-year anniversary, actually, of that, of that talk. Uh, and, you know, I laid out the sort of the big picture idea, that, the, the, the possibility that um, you could construct a policy based on the idea that if you want more of something, tax it less, and that this made particular sense with those pro new profitability. Um, there's a lot of different uh, key aspects to the raw concept. Um, you know, we use carrots, not sticks, because you know, a lot of the policies have, that are being used have sticks and barriers built into them. And it turns out that uh, a lot of workhorses vote. Uh, so, and they don't like the sticks. You'll get a lot better political acceptance if you lead with carrots. Um, the, because of that, we avoid creating barriers to capital and participation. And this became particularly uh, uh, important as we developed the idea because we realized it isn't just about tax cuts, it's about creating incentives that don't create any new barriers. For instance, a tax credit uh, is an incentive that cuts taxes to reduce the cost of capital, but because of the design of a lot of tax credits, they only appeal to certain investors and so they create barriers for other investors. So you really need to pay attention to your policy design to eliminate all barriers. Uh, you know, a quick visual to imagine this. I don't know if any of you have seen Amory's house, Amory Lovins' house. Uh, you know, he has, he's reduced the, the cost, electric cost of his plumbing system by having wide pipes with gentle angles instead of narrow pipes with, 
you know, right, right angles. And wider pipes is clean tax cuts. What we're talking about is reducing barriers, widening those pipes so you get better flow of capital. That's an easy way to understand what we're talking about doing here. Um, so there are some precedents for clean tax cuts uh, that are very successful. Um, for, for instance, the conservation easement tax deduction was introduced during the Reagan administration in the 1980s. Uh, the Turners and Seidels were among the first families to do that, as well as my own family, the Richardsons, adopted these conservation easements. And it's a great success story. Uh, we have uh, th uh, 33 million new acres of, of U.S. forests that have regrown in, in that time frame, uh, but just between uh, 2005 and 2015, we added 20 million acres uh, of conserved lands. So it's a very successful precedent for, for using tax cuts in policy. Um, the charitable de tax deduction, well, our day wouldn't be here without the charitable tax deduction. Grace Richardson Fund, wouldn't, many of you people wouldn't be here without that. So th these, this kind of idea of if you want more of something good, tax it less. Uh, is used successfully in all kinds of different ways. I might add that the Trump solar tariff is the opposite of a clean tax cut. If you would like to know what an opposite of a clean tax cut looks like, that's it. Um, <clears throat> so I won't go into this in great detail, but uh, since that initial uh, uh, presentation, um, we have uh, been on a journey uh, inspired by Amory Lovins, who suggested we develop this with Charette process. Uh, and the, uh, that, that process uh, has led to a charrette marathon where we, Nature Conservancy, uh, R Street Institute, Columbia University, ASU, uh, University of Colorado at Boulder, and many others participated in meetings, uh, co-hosting meetings to figure this out for different sectors of the economy. And that has all been distilled down into uh, what I'm about to present to you today with, through the work of the American Council for an Energy Efficient Economy and uh, the Clean Capitalist Leadership Council. So <clears throat> that is the Barrier-Free Clean Capital Market Act. Okay, now the bar the, there were many clean tax cut pol you know, uh, policy mechanisms that were developed, uh, but to keep things simple, we went with one of those mechanisms, the most powerful, which is the clean asset bond. They're at the core of the act. And those are federally tax-exempt corporate and mortgage-backed bonds and loans for high-impact pre-qualified assets. OK, the, mo the uh, key example, Travis Bradford uh, at, at Columbia, Professor Travis Bradford invented this. The example that he used uh, is a zero-emission power source is an example of a clean asset, for instance, that would be uh, put forward. But, the Act proposes this for a short list of things that have high impact that we know uh, will, will deliver impact. Uh, low or no emission power and vehicles, all carbon and hydrocarbon capture, including from oil and gas, the work we did at University of Boulder, uh, zero energy buildings, combined heat and power, waste recycling, uh, and all supporting infrastructure. That, and that the all carbon capture includes air capture, too. Uh, to ASU's contribution to this idea. Uh, so the Act proposes a six-year pilot program with an annual step-down where you allow tax-exempt clean asset bonds to finance 80% of the project in f the first year to really kick-start the use of this and start securitization in this industry to a greater degree. Uh, and that steps down gradually until year five and six to 40% of total capital. What that does is that it guarantees that federal tax revenues will increase over the life of the pilot program because the rest of the capital stack is going to be taxable investment. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting idea because you have an incentive which draws in taxable investment. But I'll get into that more later. A really interesting feature of this act is that it invites international reciprocity. Uh, it's a plug-and-play uh, proposal that any nation can enact. Any nation could lead on this. Any nation can join. You don't actually need a treaty to do this. The act itself would be written to provide 
the clean asset bonds issued by businesses in cooperating countries would be tax exempt to citizens in all the cooperating countries. Uh, so it's, it's a very simple framework to, to, uh, to spread the mean, to spread the policy around globally. Um, it creates, a, 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 this framework would create a global barrier-free clean capital market fast, we believe. Uh, it would be the best way to accelerate global sustainable development, as well as peace and freedom and prosperity uh, by, uh, in, you know, uh, supporting sustainable development. Also, one feature uh, of this would be uh, proposed for the Act is that there would be no tariffs on these clean assets between cooperating countries. So what better way to respond to the uh, uh, Trump um, solar tariffs and trade wars than to say, hey, you know what? Our response is to create a barrier-free clean capital market. No tax on solar, and every country that joins is going to have a competitive advantage over those who don't. Um, <clears throat> they, you know, I, I ooh, what, does this go backwards? Uh, anyway, I, yes, great, thank you. Uh, so the a precedent for this barrier-free clean capital market is the regional carbon trading markets uh, that have, you know, you probably know a lot about. Uh, however, it will be easier to build the barrier-free clean capital market than the regional carbon trading markets uh, because of the international reciprocity feature built into the bill itself. Uh, you know, uh, though that there's a precedent for that kind of international reciprocity. It, it's already included in most tax treaties. So an a tax-exempt U.S. organization is treated tax-exempt in, in a European country, for instance. Uh, but there's no need to negotiate complex tax treaties because of the, uh, you know, as you need to do for carbon fees, uh, because it's a simple plug-and-play legislation that any nation can pass. Um, you know, a, a key difference is that there is no, this is all stick and no, uh, it's all carrot and no stick. There's a little bit of a stick in the carbon trading uh, thing, the carbon fees create political resistance. So this clean uh, uh, asset uh, bond and the clean, barrier-free clean capital market should have acceptance in places where you can't go with a carbon market because of resistance to those uh, you know, fees. Um, <clears throat> let me uh, go forward. So it's important to say that any nation can lead on this. We don't rely on the U.S. Congress passing this, though it would be nice if they do. But uh, I, I want to point out that this should be very, very popular with certain, uh, certain kinds of nations. Uh, developing nations, it solves a key problem for them. How do you attract foreign capital for sustainable development? This is a way to suck lots of first world money into the developing world that will be very popular. This is climate justice in action, a free market uh, you know, solution to the climate justice problem. Uh, it should also be very popular with leading green states and nations because it solves a key problem. You know, how do you meet Paris commitments? So I could see Justin Trudeau saying, hmm, how do I respond to Donald Trump? This might be a good way to do it. Um, so, in any event, it will create a lot of, you know, momentum to join because of the advantage it gives to those nations who do join. Um, but a key question that needs to be asked is why the clean asset bonds? Uh, you know, we have a lot of other mechanisms that were developed that are very good, clean product equity tax cuts that can accelerate clean, sustainable products, uh, clean expensing is a great mechanism for also supporting assets. Zero tax on innovation is an idea that I can discuss in Q&A if you want. But why the clean asset bonds in particular? You know, it's because as we explored this, we found out this, this idea, which is only a little over a year old, as we explored it, we found out that it really is truly unique. Uh, it is the only uh, tax-exempt private bond for the private bond market. All other tax-exempt bonding is in the muni bond, government bond space. In that space, you know, on the, on the other side of, uh, you know, well, let me just say back away from that, but first for a second, that is the private bond market, U.S. corporate mortgage-backed bond market, 18.3 trillion versus 3.9 trillion muni market, okay? So it's where the money is. 
That's why you want to put your incentive there. If you want to build a really big market, put your incentive where the money is. Globally, that's about a $46 trillion market. Most countries don't have muni bond markets. If you, if you propose a, a muni bond incentive, it can't be replicated in other countries because they don't have any precedent for that at all. Uh, also, we discovered this is the only leveraged incentive. Okay, so there is no other leveraged incentive. This, this is the only uh, incentive that applies policy leverage to financial leverage. As I said, in the, in the, in the Munimon market, uh, on the other side of debt is government. There's no financial leverage. In the, in the private market, on the other side of government, uh, uh, on the other side of debt, is equity. So you get all these really cool uh, leverage effects that capitalists love to use. Uh, low, you lower the cost of capital, right? And you magnify that effect. You, the capitalists love to use debt because it's cheaper than equity. Uh, but this makes it even cheaper by giving you the tax exemption. So it means cheaper clean energy and cheaper clean products. You get faster growth in a way that increases GDP. You get faster clean infrastructure growth. You get higher return on equity. Uh, so, and the capitalists love those higher profits. But this is really important for us because it means that this is unlike any other incentive in a crucial respect. Every other incentive out there, you know, only um, appeals to a very narrow segment of the market. Uh, for instance, the tax credits for wind and solar really appeal to the biggest investors possible, and the second tier of merely big investors have to go to the bankers and give up a lot of, mom and pop can't even play in that market. You know, uh, you know and the, the same is true for muni bonds. They only appeal to high net worth individuals, but only in one state. So you have a lot of illiquidity, and, and it's, it's a small market. When you have higher return on equity, it means that not only are we appealing to the people who want to buy those bonds, and we've made that a national and, in fact, an international market, mostly high net worth individuals who are going to buy that, but the higher return on the equity incents all investors, the middle income investors, the pension funds, the tax-exempt pension funds, the big corporate investors are going to be incented to buy the equity. So this is the only incentive that I know of that incents people to actually buy taxable investments which is really cool, increases its cost effectiveness. So put those things together, and this is the only incentive that's able to spark a global barrier-free clean capital market and incent that creation very quickly uh, because it incents all investors on debt side and equity side. Uh, any nation can lead on this, so it, you know, it, it, it's easy to, to join. Um, it can be applied to all kinds of solutions across all sectors globally. It removes all barriers and maximizes participation globally. So this is an amazing opportunity to attract sustainable investment in developing nations. So there's no really other investment that can do that. Uh, the muni bonds, you know, have lots of problems, as I've talked to. They add, you know, ba basically the, all those problems in the muni bond market add up to, they add up to the fact that because those markets are illiquid, even though they're tax exempt, there's something called an illiquidity risk premium that adds an extra 1.2 percentage points in the cost of those bonds. So they're giving up about half the value of the tax exemption is extra cost that the, the muni governments are paying. So you don't want to put an incentive in the, in the muni bond market because you're, you're wasting half your incentive. Um, in any event, uh, there are other, you know, I will blow through this very quickly and we can come back, but it's more cost incentive than any other incentive because of that leverage effect. You're giving the, the tax exemption on the cheap debt, 4%, re, you know, return on debt in the U.S., and you're taxing the equity, which is a return on debt of 13.6%. So that's you're taxing this stuff where you're getting 340% more tax revenue off of it per dollar of investment. So it's, it's a smart way to go. Um, other, you know, even, the, even the clean tax cut stuff on the equity, the re, one of the reasons we didn't use the, the clean tax cut stuff on equity is there's no leverage effect on that. 
It's, it's a great policy. It has a lot of great uh, features to it. But we decided to go with a more powerful tool. And in fact, there, there's even the possibility with the claim tax cuts of budget neutrality. That means that if you add up that strong positive tax revenue, plus reduction in subsidy use, and plus reduction in costs from pollution damage, you have a possibility of budget neutrality, which we, I can't claim that that's going to happen for sure. It'll have to be studied as we roll this out. It's, it's, it'll only, the proof is in the pudding. But it, it, you know, we'll probably come closer to that than any other incentive out there. Um, it's the only incentive that raises GDP. It's the only incentive that acts like a broad-based investment tax cut because energy is ubiquitous. Everybody uses it. When you drive down the cost of capital, you drive down the cost of clean energy. And because you drive down the cost of clean energy, that puts competitive pressure on fossil fuel energy. It forces them to lower their prices, lower their margins. So that cheaper energy throughout the economy acts like a tax cut for everyone. You know, you have more disposable energy income for your average citizen, higher profits for every energy using business, uh, and that drives more investment consumption, higher GDP and tax revenue all along. Anyway, it's a lot to take in, I know, guys. Uh, but, you know, the bottom line is this can build a big clean capital market fast. Uh, you know, big, you know it, it increases political participation, uh, you know, the basic equation on the bottom is no barriers equals more participations equals a bigger clean capital market. That means bigger opportunities, cheaper clean energy, faster clean infrastructure deployment, more jobs, profits, prosperity, more tax revenue, and the big payoff is a cleaner planet plus more peace, freedom, and global prosperity. Because one thing that is definitely driving war is poverty the lack of economic development in the third world. This solves that problem directly. So it's an answer to not just a clean planet, but to war, to terrorism, uh, to uh, refugee immigration problems. This is a better answer than building a frickin' wall on the border. So, <clears throat> so let, me, let me just finish to say that um, with a help wanted ad, uh, you know, we need global ambassadors. There's only so much that the small Grace Richardson Foundation can do. We would love help from everybody in spreading this idea. This is a very new proposal. It's just being introduced now. You're hearing it for the first time that anyone's heard it publicly. This is you. Um, you know, we need to help spread the world globally. If you go to other countries and you talk at conferences like this, if you want to be our ambassador, please. Uh, policy experts, you know, collaborate with us further on development of clean tax cut ideas. There's a lot of work on the other categories that we couldn't bring in. You're, you're interested in regenerative agriculture, a lot of you guys. You know, we need to figure out certification for regenerative agriculture to really apply this there. Um, so there's a lot of policy work that needs to be done still. Uh, you know, anyone please uh, contact me uh, or talk to me and now I want to let you know that you have two choices. Uh, you can either go to lunch, which is over there, and come back here with your plates and ask questions, or you can ask questions now if you want to, and we're going to have a Q&A. But uh, lunch is on. There's a book signing. And uh, thank you, Chip. And I'll, uh, it, we'll go from there. But thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Rob. I'm, I'm paying attention. So, okay. So, are there any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I read your proposal. They're coming with a. Sharon's coming with a mic. Thank you, Sharon. Hi, I, uh, Chris Menzel. I read your proposal before I came here, and in there you mentioned specifically the states, and I, I think you were describing how you would start this federally first, and then bring the states in. Uh -huh. uh, what's, what's the idea now? Start with a state? Start with Well, the, the proposals that you see here are, that we, by the way, we have these uh, proposals can be found uh, in the other room. There's a, a table on the far side, or this side of the room. Uh, you'll see the, um, 
bullet point proposal, the federal proposal, the international proposal. The state proposal looks an awful lot like this. Mm -hmm. Because what we're, we're suggesting, and we, it's not there, but a state could lead on this just as easily as the federal government. Mm -hmm. California could say, or New York could say, gee, this is a great idea. So, uh, you know, we're going to pass this bill in our state, but it invites, and we're going to go talk to China, and we're going to go talk to uh, Canada, and we're going to go talk to Mexico, and we're going to go talk to the EU. And, you know, they can all pass their bills with California. Clean asset bonds that are issued in California will be tax exempt in all those countries. Clean asset bonds that are issued in all those countries will be tax exempt in California, uh, you know, which will be enormously attractive to those countries to attract the money from the, the uh, you know, California bil trillionaires, billionaires. How big, how rich are they now? But anyway, they're, you know, so, so it, this is a policy where actually states could lead on it. Anyone could lead on it. We've constructed it as a plug and play proposal. Great. I, I'll bring it to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Uh, um, anyone else? Another question. The, the oh. trillions of dollars that you're mentioning are just humongous, considering that the entire United States is worth like $100 trillion. Uh, your numbers are, are truly gigantic. Is it, is it possible to do that? You know, uh, the, the challenge is enormous. And, you know, we're going to have to see what it is that this can accomplish. I'm sure it will accomplish a great deal. It's hard to say exactly what, you know, it's so important to have the pilot program in order to model what it can do. Uh, you know, we're, you know, all we know is that uh, other attempts to use, uh, you know, things that look like clean tax cuts have been very successful. Looking at the conservation instrument tax deduction has been an enormous success. Uh, the charitable tax deduction is an enormous success. Ireland's, uh, you know, uh, tax exemption for artists, they thought artists deserved a tax exemption. That's been an enormous success. So the, these things can work. Uh, I'm not going to say that this alone uh, is going to solve it, but it is definitely something worth trying, particularly because, because it's pure carrot, it should be the low-hanging fruit. It should be the thing that is easy to do. Uh, and also, you know, there, there's a kind of um, Alexander Hamilton, you know, when he, he, he had a strategy that this mimics, which was, you know, he did this deal where the states, he, the federal government assumed, uh, you know, all the debt of the, of the states, and suddenly uh, the United States found that it had much more political support because suddenly, uh, everybody was hoping to get their money paid back from the United States. <laughs> so they were invested in it. Foreign governments were invested in it. This does the same thing. It, it opens up investment in a clean, uh, the clean economy. So when mom and pop start investing more in the clean economy, when you get more people participating, suddenly you get more political support. So some of the policies that might be more difficult to implement become more possible when you do something like this first. And, and um, are we done? So thank you very much.